In this video, we'll be heading to Siberia, Russia. We're diving into five true stories of people who disappeared without a clear reason. As we share these tales, we're left wondering, what's behind these puzzling events? Could there be something strange lurking in Siberia's surroundings? Join us as we look into these spooky tales and wonder what happened to those who went missing. In August of 1960, a team of geologists led by the notable Vladimir Dubchenko went on a daring expedition into the expansive and wild terrain of North Baikal Taiga, a mission that aimed to reveal the ancient geological mysteries hidden within the rugged landscape. The team was comprised of individuals of diverse expertise, including Nina, a highly skilled and experienced geologist whose expertise was widely acknowledged, and Nikolai Troyan, a passionate and ambitious young enthusiast eager to showcase his abilities in the field. On the cold morning of August 10th, Nina and Nikolai, carrying lots of maps, tools, and their own determination to explore something new, set out on their daily exploration. However, nature seemed to not cooperate with them, making a seemingly routine mission turn into a dangerous one. As they navigated through the dangerous terrain of the dense forest, they encountered obstacles such as the entangled foliage, slippery ground, and the daunting Sinitka River, whose swift and turbulent waters posed a serious challenge. Not bothered by these challenges on their way, they still continued. However, their own fate had a different plan in store for them. The weather abruptly took a turn for the worse, with dark clouds looming ominously overhead, accompanied by howling winds, torrential rain, and swirling snowflakes that caught the geologists off guard. Even the experienced event key guides accompanying the team were taken aback by the sudden intensity of the storm. Despite the increasingly hostile conditions, Nina and Nikolai persisted in their pursuit of the expedition's goal, and they were really determined to know what's hidden beneath these geological wonders. However, as the storm intensified, communication with the base camp went weak, leaving them isolated and vulnerable amidst the unforgiving storm. Hours passed by, which eventually turned into days, and concern began to grow among their colleagues at the base camp. When Nina and Nikolai failed to return as scheduled, a search party led by Vladimir Dubchenko was swiftly assembled. The team searched the area tirelessly, their voices echoing through the wind as they called out the names of their missing comrades, hoping for a faint response to guide them in the right direction. Yet there was no response or even traces from the two, offering no clues to the whereabouts of the vanished geologists. The heavy snowfall had effortlessly covered their tracks, rendering them almost impossible to trace. The relentless search continued, carrying with them the frantic hope of discovering Nina and Nikolai alive. What seemed to be days turned eventually into months, and the prolonged absence of Nina and Nikolai cast a gloomy shadow over their colleagues, who refused to give up and still hoped for a miracle to come. Various theories and speculations were made, ranging from accidental mishaps to encounters with wild animals, yet none could provide a definitive explanation for their inexplicable disappearance. Some said that they might have succumbed to the treacherous currents of the Sinitka River, while others entertained the grim possibility of a fatal encounter with a predatory beast. However, lacking tangible evidence to support these theories presented, they merely remained as unverified. With the passage of time, the mystery surrounding their vanishing deepened, giving rise to increasingly fantastical speculations. Supernatural interventions and extraterrestrial abductions entered the conversations between people who speculated, overshadowing the efforts to uncover the truth. With the swirling rumors, the undeniable fact remained. The whereabouts of Nina and Nikolai remained a mystery. Years slipped away, and the memory of the missing geologists gradually faded from the public consciousness. Yet for those intimately acquainted with their story, the ache of their absence lingered on, and more questions have yet to be answered with time. In the end, 
the inexplicable disappearance of Nina and Nikolai remains a mystery in the records of the North Baikal Taiga. The overarching question persists. What really happened on that very day? Did they meet a tragic end? Or did they go on a mysterious trip into the unknown, forever hidden from everyone? Only time can show the answers. In September 2009, the city of Novosibirsk, Russia, was rocked by the sudden disappearance of Irina Safanova, a 28-year-old child psychologist. The events leading up to her vanishing act seemed mundane, almost routine. Irina had spent the evening at the Pobita Cinema with her boyfriend Alexander Skurikin. They had watched a movie together, sharing popcorn and laughter like any other couple. At around 11.30 p.m., the movie ended, and Alexander drove Arena back to her apartment building. Surveillance footage captured her entering the building at precisely 12.02 a.m., stepping into the elevator with the familiarity of someone who had done it countless times before. That was the last time Arena was seen or heard. The alarm was raised when Arena failed to return home that night. Alexander, concerned for her safety, tried calling her phone repeatedly, but to no avail. He then contacted Irina's son, Andre, who confirmed that his mother hadn't come home. Panic ensued, and the search for Irina Safanova began. The initial search efforts were massive and widespread. Family, friends, and concerned citizens combed the streets of Novosibirsk, plastering the city with missing posters and appealing for any information that could lead to Irina's whereabouts. Police officers questioned witnesses and reviewed surveillance footage from nearby buildings, hoping for a clue that might solve the mystery. Despite their exhaustive efforts, the search yielded no concrete leads. The days passed by, and Arena's disappearance remained an unsolved puzzle. Theories began to emerge, each more speculative than the last. One theory suggested that Arena had been abducted, perhaps by someone she knew or by a stranger lurking around her neighborhood. Another suggested that she had fallen victim to foul play. Her disappearance was planned by someone with a motive known only to them. Yet without evidence to support these theories, there remained nothing more than speculations. As time passed, suspicion fell on those closest to Arena. Alexander, her boyfriend, faced intense scrutiny despite passing a polygraph test and cooperating fully with the investigation. The possibility of his involvement loomed large, casting a shadow over their once ordinary relationship. Irina's estranged husband, Vladimir Safanov, also came under suspicion. Living in Moscow at the time of her disappearance, Vladimir's whereabouts and motives were questioned. Yet, like Alexander, there was no evidence linking him to Irina's mysterious disappearance. Despite the absence of concrete evidence, the investigation continued, fueled by the hope of finding answers for Arena's family and friends. However, as time passed, and the months eventually turned into years, the case grew cold, and Arena's fate remained unknown. Today, the disappearance of Arena Safanova continues to haunt the city of Novosibirsk. What happened to Arena on that night? Was she the victim of a random act of violence? Or was her disappearance part of a larger, more sinister scheme? And perhaps more importantly, will the truth ever come to light? Or will Irina's story remain forever shrouded in mystery? What if Irina's disappearance was carefully planned by someone within her inner circle, hiding their true intentions behind a facade of normalcy? What secrets lay buried in the streets of Novosibirsk waiting to be unearthed by those brave enough to seek them out. And ultimately, will justice ever be served for Irina Safanova, or will her fate remain a mystery for eternity? Victor Mekas was a typical 20-year-old student studying at the Irkutsk State University. He lived in a dormitory on Lesya Ukraina Street, sharing a room with a fellow student. On the night of April 25, 2023, Victor went out with friends to Bravo Nightclub, a popular spot among students in Irkutsk. 
They laughed and danced the night away, enjoying the freedom that comes with youth and the excitement of the weekend. As the night came to a close, Victor said goodbye to his friends outside the club. He planned to walk back to his dormitory alone, a short distance away. It was a route he had taken many times before, and he didn't foresee any issues. However, Victor never made it back to his dormitory that night. When his roommate woke up the next morning, he noticed that Victor's bed was empty. Assuming Victor had spent the night elsewhere, he didn't think much of it at first. But as the day went on and Victor still hadn't returned, concern began to set in. Victor's friends, knowing it was unlike him to disappear without a word, contacted his family. Together, they retraced his steps and checked with anyone who might have seen him after leaving the club, but there was no sign of Victor. The following day, Victor's family filed a missing person report with the police. They provided details of his last known whereabouts and descriptions of his appearance. The police assured them that they would do everything they could to find Victor and bring him home safely. Days passed and the search for Victor intensified. Flyers with his photo and description were posted around the city, and volunteers joined in the efforts to comb through nearby neighborhoods and parks. But despite their best efforts, Victor's whereabouts remained a mystery. Then a breakthrough, or so they thought. A month after Victor's disappearance, a fisherman found his passport near Yacobi Bay, not far from where the Angara River flows into Lake Bacal. This discovery sparked new hope that Victor might still be found alive. Dive teams were dispatched to search the riverbed for any trace of Victor. They carefully combed through the murky waters, hoping to find something that would lead them to him. But as time passed and no new evidence surfaced, the initial optimism began to fade. With each passing day, Victor's family and friends grappled with the uncertainty of what happened to him. They clung to the hope that he was out there somewhere, waiting to be found. But as time passed, their hope began to fade. Various theories circulated about what might have happened to Victor. Some believed he had fallen victim to the river's currents, perhaps after a misstep or accident while walking near the water's edge. Others speculated that foul play might be involved, pointing to the possibility of abduction or robbery gone wrong. Despite the lack of concrete evidence, the search for Victor continued. The city of Irkutsk rallied around his family, offering support and assistance in any way they could. But as time went on and leaves grew cold, the likelihood of finding Victor alive dwindled. Now, almost a year since his disappearance, Victor Mekas remains missing. His family continues to hold out hope for answers, but the passage of time has only deepened the mystery surrounding his fate. What if Victor had encountered foul play, his fate forever tied to the river? What if he had chosen to disappear, seeking a new life elsewhere? These questions were discussed, haunting those who knew and loved him, as they continue to search for the truth. In June of 2023, a young firefighter named Maxim Mikasev vanished during a forest fire in the Krasnoyarsk territory. He was just 21 years old. Now, let's break down what happened. Maxim was on duty with his team, battling a forest fire in the remote Tosivsky district. It was a tough job, but he was dedicated to protecting the wilderness he loved. Then, on the night of June 20th, things took a turn for the worse. During dinner, tensions rose among the firefighters. Some say it was because of alcohol. Whatever the reason, a fight broke out, and Maxime was in the middle of it. With fists flying and tempers flaring, he decided to leave. He didn't take his phone or any of his stuff. He just walked off into the forest, barefoot and alone. When his colleagues realized he was gone, they searched for him. They called out his name, but there was no answer. As the sun started to rise, they knew they had to do something. They called the police and the rescue teams, hoping they could find Maxime before it was too late. The search was intense. Rescuers ventured through the forest, looking for any sign of Maxime. They used dogs to sniff out his scent and helicopters to search from above. But despite their efforts, there was no trace of it. As time passed, Maxime's family grew more desperate for answers. 
His mother, Evgenia Makovetskaya, turned to social media, begging for help. She couldn't understand why her son would just disappear like that. She was sure something terrible had happened to him. In October, the search resumed with even more people involved. They covered hundreds of kilometers, searching every inch of the forest. But still, there was no sign of Maxime. Now, let's talk about the theories. Some people think Maxime got lost in the forest. Maybe he wandered off and couldn't find his way back. Others believe he was attacked by an animal, like a bear or a wolf. And then there are those who think something more sinister happened. They say Maxime's colleagues had something to do with his disappearance. Maybe they heard him and then covered it up. Throughout this mysterious disappearance, the community joined in the relentless search effort. Maxime's story became a haunting mystery that gripped the hearts of many. Days passed that eventually turned into months, but Maxime's whereabouts remained a mystery lost in the wilderness. The changing seasons painted the forest in different hues, but the truth behind Maxime's disappearance remained hidden, surrounded by uncertainty and speculation. Each passing day brought a new theory, a new possibility, but no definitive answers. So what if Maxime really did get lost in the forest? What if he's out there somewhere, scared and alone, waiting to be found? Or what if he was attacked by an animal? It's a terrifying thought, but it could explain why there's been no sign of him. And then there's the possibility that someone hurt him. It's a chilling idea. But until Maxime is found, we won't know for sure what happened to him. The mystery of his disappearance lingers, haunting those who knew him and leaving a void that can only be filled by the truth. In Rezhevsky district in the Sverlovsk region, the small village of Cheremiskoya stood overshadowed by a harrowing mystery that unraveled on a fateful summer night in August 2007. This mysterious puzzle revolved around the three-year-old Maxim Plotnikov, born on the 26th of August in 2004, whose sudden disappearance shocked a whole tight-knit community, leaving them gripped with fear and uncertainty. Before his inexplicable disappearance, Maxime had been living with his loving grandparents in their cozy countryside abode. The routine evening of August 19th witnessed Maxime's grandmother carrying out her usual bedtime ritual, tenderly tucking him in around 11 p.m. As the innocent child peacefully drifted off to sleep, oblivious to the sudden change, little did he know the turbulent events that would soon disrupt the peacefulness of his world. In the silent hours that followed, Maxime's grandparents were peaceful in their slumber, their sense of security shattered by the unforeseen events awaiting them. It wasn't until the crack of dawn, around 5 a.m., that Maxime's grandfather returned from his night shift, only to be greeted by the chilling void left by his missing grandson. A palpable sense of dread covered the household as frantic searches proved useless in locating the young boy. Promptly responding to the distress call, law enforcement initiated a thorough investigation to solve the mystery shrouding Maxime's disappearance. Preliminary investigations revealed that Maxime's grandmother had put him to bed only to find him missing upon waking. Complicating matters further, Maxime's parents were away in Yekaterinburg at the time, adding a layer of perplexity to the unfolding mystery. In a concerted effort to trace Maxime's whereabouts, the authorities enlisted the aid of a service dog, whose acute olfactory senses guided them toward the highway leading to the city of Nevyansk. Joining the search efforts were military personnel from the nearby village of Pervomysky, tirelessly searching through abandoned structures, dense woodlands, and the riverbanks of Reshevsky in pursuit of any clue that could shed light on Maxime's whereabouts. Despite the exhaustive search missions, Maxime's whereabouts continued to remain a mystery, making people uncertain of what might have happened to him. A sudden twist in the story saw suspicion looming over Maxime's own grandparents, who were detained by law enforcement for questioning under Article 91 of the Criminal Code of the Russian Federation. 
Nevertheless, no formal charges were pressed against them, and they remained under the close scrutiny of the authorities as the investigation progressed, adding a new dimension to the puzzling case. Various theories surrounded the circumstances surrounding Maxime's disappearance, ranging between the chances of foul play and tragic misfortune, each theory hinting at the chilling possibilities waiting to be proved. While some speculated about the potential role of Maxime's grandparents in his sudden disappearance, others pondered the grim likelihood of an unseen tragedy happening to the young boy during the night he disappeared. As the days of relentless searching went into weeks, the hunt for Maxime Plotnikov continued. Each passing day brought forth another set of unanswered questions rather than answers, further haunting the community with the looming uncertainty. What if Maxime's disappearance hit a darker truth that was planned by those closest to him? Could the answers to Maxime's vanishing lie buried beneath layers of deceit and betrayal, awaiting discovery through the pursuit of truth and justice? We may never know, as until now, Maxime's sudden yet mysterious disappearance was still left with a big question mark.